St. Joseph, the light of patriarchs. Well, the figure of St. Joseph uh, in the scriptures is a positively fascinating figure. Uh, when we look at the Gospel of Matthew, that's where we get the most information about St. Joseph, uh, we see that the whole genealogy of Jesus Christ is uh, given to us in the opening chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel leading up to Joseph. We know that Joseph is not the biological father of Jesus. Uh, he's the foster father of the Lord uh, who gives him his legal status uh, through his uh, line of patriarchy. Uh, what do we mean by a patriarch or a patriarch? It means the father of a people. And Joseph is the father of the people of God. We call him the universal patron of the church um, because he had this patriarchal role uh, as the bridge between the Old Testament and the New Testament. There was a long line of fathers of the Jewish people, the great patriarchs, beginning with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And down through the Old Testament, we see all the great patriarchs. And Joseph is cast in that same line uh, as the crowning moment. And he, as the foster father of the Lord, then takes on this unique position in the history of our church and in the history of the world. Now let me say three things about being a patriarch and being the crowning light of all the patriarchs that we see in the scriptures. Let me say this about Joseph. Um, we call the study of Saint Joseph in our Catholic tradition, Josephology. Uh, and I'm not really a, a Josephologist, uh, a doctor of uh, studies in the figure of Saint Joseph, but uh, all Catholics in a sense are Josephologists because all of us appreciate uh, in our Catholic tradition the teachings about Joseph being this great light uh, in the church. There are three aspects I'd like to dwell upon ever so briefly about Joseph's patriarchy. Uh, first of all, uh, his uh, direct relationship with being the patriarch, the father of the Holy Family, of Mary and of Jesus. You can go to Nazareth today and you can see where they've excavated the house of Joseph and all of the research that's been done about what life was like in the little town of Nazareth, 25 families there, uh, one of them the family of Joseph, um, back in the time of Jesus Christ. You can see where the carpentry shop was, where Joseph would have practiced the trade of carpentry and taught it to the child and adolescent Jesus. The, uh, now I have it on very good authority that they drank tea in the house of the Holy Family in Nazareth. And my authority here is the stained glass window in the cathedral in Galway, Ireland, the beautiful cathedral in the city of Galway in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel has a stained glass window that shows Joseph at the workbench, the Blessed Mother in her rocking chair doing her knitting, and the adolescent Jesus standing in front of the workbench handing a cup of tea uh, on a saucer to his foster father Joseph. So, uh, so take it from that Galway window that it was a domestic scene in which Joseph was the patriarch of that family. Uh, curiously, um, Joseph uh, is not recorded in the scriptures as ever saying a single word. There's not one quotation of Joseph in the whole New Testament. Of course, if you lived with two perfect people, Jesus and Mary, how could you get a word in edgewise anyway? But Joseph, uh, in his humility, uh, was uh, exercising a unique role. We sometimes call it the silence of Joseph. It was the wisdom, the, the quiet presence uh, of a safeguarding guardian patriarch in the house of the Holy Family. Uh, this leads me to the second virtue of Joseph. 
his humility. Uh, there is some question among Josephologists on uh, whether or not Joseph doubted Our Lady, doubted Mary when he found out she was carrying Jesus. Uh, in Latin, it's called the dubium of Joseph, the doubt of Joseph. And uh, most of our Catholic tradition uh, interprets the doubt of Joseph when he questioned whether or not he should uh, marry Our Lady, whether he should take her into his home. And he needed to be consoled and instructed by the angel there. The doubt wasn't about Mary. It was the doubt about himself. Am I worthy? He obviously realized something very supernatural was happening to his betrothed Mary. Uh, he trusted her totally. He didn't doubt Mary. He doubted whether he was worthy as a simple laborer in Nazareth to play such an important patriarchal role. He didn't even think that he would be a patriarch uh, in the uh, plan of God here. So the humility of Joseph was that he didn't so much think little of himself, he thought felt seldom of himself. Um, he thought always of Jesus, always of Mary, always of the other people that the Holy Family was there to serve and to inspire. And the third quality about Joseph that I would want to uh, stress today, uh, besides his role as the patriarchal safeguarding guardian, besides his humility, is his prayerfulness. Notice the three moments in the scriptures where Joseph receives inspiration. The inspiration um, of the angel telling him, don't be afraid to take Mary into your home. The inspiration of the angel telling him, take Mary and Jesus the babe away from Bethlehem into the safety of Egypt. And the, the message of the angel in Egypt two years later, it's safe now, you can take Jesus and Mary back to Israel. All three of those instances of inspiration happened while Joseph is depicted as sleeping. And this, this picture of the sleeping Joseph, there's now a great devotion in the church to the sleeping Saint Joseph. It's actually an image of the contemplating, the praying Joseph, that sleep in the scriptures and in the Josephology of our Catholic tradition, the sleep of Joseph is actually a symbol of his contemplative resting in God. And it is in his contemplative, prayerful stance of resting in God that Joseph is given all of the key inspirations that he needs to fulfill his role as the God-given patriarch of the Holy Family and future patron of the Universal Church. So I offer this little reflection about Joseph as the light of patriarchs so that you and I can appreciate the role that God wants Joseph to continue playing in your lives and in mine. He's not just the patriarch guarding and safeguarding Jesus and Mary in Nazareth. He's not just the humble spouse and humble foster father. He's not just the contemplative man of prayer who does God's bidding. He's still alive and well and present, though we can't see him, in the life of the church as the universal patron of the church. Uh, and it was, I th believe, 150 years ago that the church gave him that title, patron of the universal church. So he's your patron and mine as members of the church, helping you and me to be prayerful and humble and safeguarding of others the way he was. May he be a light in your lives.